Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today I wanted to talk about the Orb of Conflict, a currency item that tells you that it is biased but doesn't tell you how bad the odds are, and that until now the player base hadn't generally known. The Orb of Conflict is something that can be used on items that are both Eater of Worlds and Searing Exarch influenced, and what it will do is it will drain a little bit of power from one of those influence mods in order to give a boost to the other one. So if you start with an item that is Grand Tier Searing Exarch modded and Exceptional Tier Eater of Worlds modded, it can drain one of those mods at random, perhaps taking the Grand down to greater, and then it'll give a bit of power to the other one, raising the Exceptional Tier mod to an Exquisite Tier mod. However, there is a bias involved in this, it's not a 50-50 chance. The chance of raising or lowering a modifier depends upon that modifier's relative strength. How strongly does it depend on it? What sort of formula does it use? Well, that's been worked out by the player base in the last week or two. Now, at this point, I would normally put a link in the description of this video below to the thread on Path of Exile's subreddit where this was discussed. However, there's somewhat of a consumer boycott of Reddit that's being organized by a number of people at the moment, and the person who posted that thread is one of the Path of Exile subreddit moderators. The moderator team there are all taking part in this boycott, and so for that reason, it feels like it would undermine her protest to post a link to her data. Instead, what I'll do is I'll summarize it here, and if at some point in the future, Reddit decide to cave on some of their really ridiculous decisions of late, and the boycott ends up being lifted, then at that point I will edit this to have a link to that thread. So the core summary is that if you apply an Orb of Conflict to an item that has unequally tiered Exarch and Eater mods, then the chance of raising the tier of the mod that is already the higher is 50% minus 11% per tier of difference. So if there's one tier of difference, let's say you've got an exceptional and an exquisite tier, then it's 39% to raise the higher tier and 61% to raise the lower tier. If it is a two tier gap, so for instance, you have a grand mod and a lesser mod, then it is 28% to raise the higher tier mod and 72% to raise the lower tier mod. And if it is a three tier gap, then it's going to be 83-17. Now this is being tested empirically. This hasn't been pulled out of the game files through data mining or anything as authoritative as that. It is just empirical testing, but it is the best approximation we're gonna get in the short term. And it allows us to do some playing around with statistics and specifically Markov chains in order to get a lot more information about a specific situation that comes up a lot if you're trying to elevate mods with an orb of conflict. So let's assume that you've single elevated a mod already. You've rolled a chess piece that has Searing Exarch Exquisite Tier, i.e. 17 to 18% aura effect, and you want to raise that Exquisite Tier mod to Perfect Tier, i.e. 19 to 20% universal aura effect. What's your probability of ever getting there, and what sort of intermediate steps might you face? Well, that's where Markov chains come in handy. And here's a Markov chain calculator that's available from the website statskingdom.com, and I have then gone and put in all of the probabilities here. So if you start perfect grand, you're 100% end up perfect grand because you're not going to apply another orb of conflict to the item ever. If you start exquisite exceptional, then you have 39% to go perfect grand and 61% to go exceptional exquisite. If you start in that exceptional exquisite state, you're 61% to get back to exquisite exceptional and 39% to get to grand perfect. And if you start in grand perfect, something awkward can happen. You can brick your item. In this case, you have a 17% chance that the game's RNG decides to boost the perfect mod by draining the grand mod. But you can't go any higher than perfect. And what this does is it puts you into a greater perfect state, which means that you then are kind of bricked. You can't get back into where you want to be. Anyways, the probability generator here, once you run, say, I want to run 15 steps and hit calculate, it will then calculate your chances of being everywhere after 15 orbs of conflict. So you'll end up with an 82.94% chance to be in the perfect grand state, the desired state, 12.25% to brick your item, and 4.82% to be in a particular intermediate step. However, most of the time it is not going to take anything like 15 steps. I've run some numbers on this so you don't have to, and on average you are going to come to an end in about 3.25 orbs of conflict. And once you do come to this end, 86.71% chance for it to be the desired perfect grand, so you end up with your perfect tier aura effect chess piece, and 13.29% to be in a brick state where it is difficult to get back to where you started. This is only going to take you about three and a quarter on average to reach one of these two states, but just remember that there will be a small percentage of the time that it will take a lot more than this. 
Of course, you already need to be in an exquisite exceptional state in order to start this process. And if you're interested in making your own Markov chain calculator in order to work out how rare it is to get to exquisite exceptional, then you can definitely do that using the link that I'll put down below to this Markov chain calculator. Even if you don't understand all the underlying maths, it does all of the matrix multiplications for you. So all you'll need to do in this calculator in order to use it is insert states until you've got enough of the various columns and that'll also insert rows as well. Then rename them to be something that describes the state that you're looking for. And once you've done that, you then want to go and put in your probability of ending in each state, assuming you apply an orb of conflict from a particular starting point. So if you're in perfect grand, you're not going to apply an orb of conflict. So you just say, okay, probability of ending in perfect grand is one. I'm just not going to use the orb of conflict at all and zero everywhere else. If you're an exquisite exceptional, then you can use this new data to say it's 39% to go perfect grand, 61% to go exceptional exquisite, and everything else is zero because you can't get there with one orb of conflict. You'll need to fill all of this in using the new findings that have been made, and then that will allow you to then run these calculations and change the number of steps, just put it to something fairly high, and all of the information that's put in the intermediate steps down here by the program will give you a bit of a sense as to how rare it is that you will still be running after a certain number of orbs of conflict. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully this has been useful to you. May your orbs of conflict and your val orbs have interesting results and don't use them together on the same item. They don't play very well together.